Now, uh, because I only have this one window of opportunity to do this, um, when I come back from a, a, a break of eight days, I literally uh, will not have time to make up my queen cups and what have you, uh, which I like to do fresh before I actually use them normally. So I'm going to do that today. I'm going to make up my queen rack. Um, being a, um, a hobbyist uh, by nature, I, I like doing things myself like MacGyver. I've developed over the years my own method of um, producing a queen rack with queen cups to graft into. Um, and I'll demonstrate that to you now. Uh, it may not be of any use to you because today you can buy the complete kit to do everything nice and easy for you. Um, but I prefer to do things the, uh, uh, the harder way, should I say. <laughs> I'll get more satisfaction from it. So my next um, task will be to draw your attention to my wax uh, melter or um, steamer, uh, where I've got um, a block of wax, which is now molten, um, which originally came from my uh, cappings. To show the difference, this is a block of um, rendered down uh, cappings, top grade wax, whereas this is a rendered down uh, block of wax from old brood chamber type um, frames. That's not what we're after. We want pristine beeswax. I've already got in there my beeswax molten and ready for use. Now what I do, <coughs> I've made up a couple of racks of, of um, wooden dowels, nine millimeter wooden dowels with the ends um, filed down to give a nice oval cut. I've had them soaking in cold rainwater, fresh rainwater, same as the soft rainwater I melted the wax in here. It's not from the tap, it's not got anything in it other than what uh, the heavens gave it. So it's rainwater, rainwater, this is cold, that's hot. Now what I intend to do is dip this in to this molten beeswax, not too far. I want a very small cup, just nice. enough to, to cover the tips. Okay, I'll do that twice. Okay, I might actually give that one more because it's very fine. Dip that back in the cold water. I'll take this lot and do the same. I will now squeeze these off. Got to be very careful. They don't have to be perfect. It's just that you need to have some receptacle for the larvae to be grafted into. The bees soon get them to shape and to form and uh, almost as they're building them up, they're feeding them. That's actually the, the perfect sort of cup I like because it's easy to graft into it without damaging the, the larvae. Make several lots of these because um, I'm being rather ambitious here with the number of cells that I'm hoping this colony will produce for me. Normally I, I only make up a, a rack this size um, once and if it's, it's potluck really, if, they, if I'm lucky uh, I'll get 70, 80 percent of them uh, taken up. Yeah. Um, I, I don't intend to make that number of mating nukes up. Um, so I'll, I'll it's hedging your surplus, bets really, I'll, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll give some of them away. Normally, if I can get twelve or thirteen good queen cells, that's enough to satisfy my needs. Because you have to work on the principle that 
not all of them will mate properly. It's a fact of life that even if you get 80, 90% take up, yeah. you're going to lose probably 20% in the process of them flying off and mating. Um, whether they mate successfully or not is one thing. Whether they get back to the hive again without being picked out the sky yeah, by a bird or hit by a truck or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, you have to work on the principle that you you need to Margin start, start with a few more than you need. So is it just a gentle sort of... Yeah, piece? I'm trying, trying not to squash them. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's taking a little bit of... You've just got to effort. twist it to loosen it and then... Yeah. Put it back off. They're not actually stuck to the wood. The wood is wet. It's just that they're so tightly um, clamped. Where the wax it. sort of contracts and... It does, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, beeswax, as you know, used to be used in uh, thermostats because it was so accurate. Yeah. It would contract by 10% over a very sh short range of temperatures. So does the thickness... Well, that's why I dip, I dip really them three times, three times yeah, because you need them to be thick enough for purpose. The bees will thin them where they need to and draw them further. The next thing is to get to that stage. This is a, this is a cup that's too big, actually, but it shows the principle. Yeah. I'm going to dip... The wooden dowel into the molten wax and I'm going to put one of the cups and I'll dip that at the same time and then I'll bring the two together. And then let them set. That's correct. I need to unscrew all of these because my old method here is to make it so that I can easily unscrew each of the drawn queen cups and then place them in a, a cage yeah. like that where they, if they hatch, they're not going to do any damage to each other and I can transport them out to where I have my mating nukes. That looks a bit better. Yeah, it's a right bodge job though, this one. <laughs> Normally they, <laughs> they're a lot, that's better. Oh, that came off, did it? Yeah. That's set, okay. If you, at the end of this, when you've grafted your, your larvae into the cells and you see the following day, the numbers that have been accepted by the bees, you think to yourself, oh, they've accepted what I've done. So this rack here, I'm just looking at this. So this is a, is it a commercial frame? Yes, yeah, it's a commercial frame. Commercial frame. All I've done is drilled a hole um, through the sides parallel. And... Um, and then top top bars along the... Uh, from end to end. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So that they can be twisted. Look at that. So that I can graft into them. I se seem to remember last time I did this, I held them the other way round. I held, I held them that way round. Ah, okay. So I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at Ah, oh, look at that. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did that out. <laughs> oh, perfect. dear. I think that's the key, isn't it? Yeah, so let there's... The, let the dowel... There's the volume of the... the wax coming down from the dowel. But you see, the I like doing this because um, you know the source of the wax. Yep. Uh, it's not. It's not got any um, chance of having any additives unless the crop that you uh, they were foraging on had some sort of pesticide on it. Um, so one of the other reasons for the, using the, the rainwater is you're not introducing, because they're incredibly sensitive to that, aren't they? Yeah, and also it's not good for the wax. I mean, when I render down my wax, uh, when I render down my wax, it's, it's always done in rainwater. 
Right. There is, there is a chance of reaction to some of the chemicals, fluoride, chloride or whatever, in the uh, drinking water. And as you can see, I could put that between two frames with the, uh, with the wire. Yeah. Okay. Or I can store them in a, in a cage until I'm ready to run them in to a, um, an introductory cage. So, um, so they can hatch out in that cage and they can't? In theory, yes. I've, and I've had that happen uh, on many occasions. So I usually like to put a bit of um, runny honey at the bottom or, or um, honey that's just starting to crystallise so that if the queen does get out, a virgin queen will feed herself. Oh, she will. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. So, I mean, she, she's pretty hardy. Um, it's not until she starts laying that she becomes reliant on the retinue of bees to clean her and feed her and everything else. So, yeah, uh, um, a virgin queen will feed herself. So, um, but you don't want to leave her in there too long with, with um, the food. No. Because she'll need more than just glucose. Uh, she'll need water as well and uh, some protein. Will any of the bees come over to give her a share anything with her or is she more or less just left? Well, I, I, again, I've used, these are building um, raw plug uh, <laughs> cages. Some, oh, yeah, of them, yeah. some of them still got the bottoms in, the others I've taken the bottoms off. Right. The ones that have taken the bottoms off, I, if I have to put them in a, into a colony that I'm not sure will accept her straight away when she hatches or as a, as, um, a queen cell, yeah. so that they won't tear her down, I put her in that. So they have a a lot of difficulty to tear the queen cell down, but the queen can hatch and then she can fend for herself. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to um, just store the queen until you transport her out to a, a, an apiary where you're going to introduce her to a, a mating nuke, uh, the, the closed-in cages are very convenient. Mm. for that yeah definitely it's you're on a roll around. now yeah we're on a roll as they say <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't try and use this in vegas though <laughs> <laughs> that should do nicely mm.